Hi, I'm Lorenzo and I'm a home cook. And these... Okay, so it's basically using bacon, fake grilled cheese, peas. Why are you using peas? Uh, uh. Why? And we're gonna knead our dough until it's nice and smooth. Like my bald head. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> I'm gonna shut it off and I'm gonna add a nice, generous helping. What? How much pepper are you using for this? You don't have to use the entire product. I'll save a little bit later. I love adding more pepper to my carbonara, but let's go half for now. Bravo, bravo. See, he knows, he knows Lorenzo what to do. He must have watched my videos. In this video, we're reacting to a pro chef versus a homemade cook making carbonara. Expensive versus cheap carbonara. Expensive carbonara? What's expensive about carbonara? What? Pro Chef makes $174 carbonara and the homemade one makes a $10 carbonara, which is what everybody should make. Over 2 million people watch this video and let's see why. What are we gonna learn from this? Okie dokie, okie dokie. Thank goodness. This is like a nice guy. Okie dokie, okie dokie. <laughs> Challenge a pro chef with expensive ingredients, okay. Oh, so the home cook challenged the, the pro chef. It's a very nice kitchen. Hi, I'm Frank, I'm a professional chef, and these are my $174 pasta carbonara ingredients. What's wrong with you? Why is it so expensive? Oh my God! The eggs can be this expensive. The organic flour, so you're making pasta from scratch, okay, that's not expensive. The guanciale, maybe is the only expensive thing, but it won't cost more than $10. Parmigiano pecorino, you grate it. I don't understand, this is, I don't believe it. Maybe the extra virgin olive oil, which you don't need. You don't need extra virgin olive oil for this recipe, so you can save money. This is just a show. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lorenzo and I'm a home cook. And these... It looks Filipino, Lorenzo. Yeah, I think it is Filipino. Salamat. Okay, so it's basically using bacon, fake grilled cheese, peas. Why are you using peas? Uh, uh. Why? Why are you using cream? This is actually more expensive than the pro chef because you got the peas, you got the fake pecorino, you got the bacon, the cream. A lot more ingredients than the expensive one. Are my $10 pasta carbonara ingredients. I don't believe it. I don't believe the other guy spent that much money. This guy. Like I didn't know that was gonna happen. Peas and cream? No, oh, thank God he said it. Bravo. That? Oh wow, okay, he's got an expensive bottle of wine, which you don't really need, and he's got extra virgin olive oil from Umbria. But, but can you tell me one thing? Why? Have you got that? Just to make to make it exciting. Yeah, okay. Some cheese. <laughs> I was planning on making a homemade chitarra pasta carbonara. Ooh, chitarra. That's from my from where I'm from in Abruzzo. Spaghetti la chitarra. The best. I love spaghetti la chitarra. The 24 month aged Parmesan cheese. Parmigiano. I had some double O flour and some farm fresh eggs to make my own pasta by hand. I have never made pasta in my life other than boiling the water and shoving it right in. Come on, Lorenzo. You can do it, Lorenzo. I had some guanciale, which is super fancy bacon, and some premium Parmesan and pecorino cheese. Okay, but it's not under the olive. Oh, that is... you stinky. Along with a lovely olive oil and an even lovelier bottle of red wine. Which you don't need. All of them you don't need. I don't need it. Am I putting wine in this? It was gonna be rich, creamy, and absolutely spectacular. With the wine and the oil? I get cazzo digi, chef proto. I get digi. With Lorenzo's recipe, I have some ingredients you might find in your pantry or your local grocery store. These may be simple ingredients, but with a little technique and a little chef magic, I can make it beautiful. If I had a guess, this would- I don't trust you. Probably cost around 10 bucks. I'm the one that does the grocery shopping. I know the groceries. If I had to guess, this would cost... See? $30 for the Chianti. The one child, okay, is a big piece, but you can probably make two or three carbonaras with that. Extra virgin oil is too expensive. You don't need that. The 24-month aged Parmesan, okay, you did buy it, but at the same time, you're gonna grade it. You're, gonna, you're not using all of that. Oh, the Pecorino Romano is half the price. The peppercorn you chose is expensive too. Don't make people believe that carbonara is expensive. You don't need to use uh, fancy salt. Just about $222. Oh my god, I can go to the restaurant and pay dinner for three people. It's a very expensive plate of pasta. This is Frank's recipe book. No GPS whatsoever, no connect the dots. Wait, he's got the recipe, pecorino. He does use olive oil. He probably need a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. So it just doesn't make sense. Remember, this pasta is not all that hard. This is the part where I call Rose. <laughs> Rose? 
Rose? Rose? Rose? Rose? Rose? Rose? Rose? Rose? Rose? Rose? Rose? Rose? Rose? Yeah, she disappeared. She's, she's drinking the wine. <laughs> Actually, Lorenzo, you're on your own this time. You're joking. Rose couldn't make it today, so time to leave the nest, little chickadee. Ah, oh, Lorenzo, I'm sorry for you, Lorenzo, but you need to work hard today. Come on, make the guitar. Fudge? Yes, let's do it. Come on, Lorenzo, you can do it. There you are. <laughs> the biggest challenge right off the bat is homemade spaghetti. I usually just... It's not easy to do. Scan it in the grocery. Boop. I'm gonna have Lorenzo do this granny style. And by granny style, I mean he's gonna make a pile of his flour. Now we've got Montezuma. He's gonna make a volcano. We're gonna crack our eggs in there, a little bit of salt, and then we're gonna whisk our eggs with a fork. We don't want our volcano erupting. Volcano save. Once we get to a point where the eggs aren't gonna run out anymore, we start to bring our flour in, and then we start to knead. Never done this before, and I, I, fairly simple so far. It is simple, it's very easy. You just uh, need to mix the ingredients together. You can even do it, it's not the right thing to do, but you can even do it in a stand mixer, if you really wanna be lazy, you know? But this is fun to do, and it tastes so good. And we're gonna knead our dough until it's nice and smooth. Like my bald head. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> When we knead the flour, we're really working the gluten, and the gluten is really tough. And this is why we let the pasta rest for about 20 minutes, so that it's easier to roll out, and we get nice, kind of long strands of spaghetti. Very good advice. I'm gonna let it rest for a while. From Lorenzo, I have some peas and Parmesan. When carbonara came across the big ocean, people decide they want to put peas in it. But not just the ocean, Peter. Even Gordon Ramsay in England, he makes that. No, it's not that old! It's not that old! So I don't know why, as soon as it left Italy, people had the peas. What this peas business got to do with carbonara? I'm gonna have a little fun with it. I'm gonna dehydrate them both. This is gonna be the topping for my finished dish. Peter, you don't have to do it. Please, just say, send it back. Just send the peas back to Lorenzo, you can do it. But you're a respected chef, you know? A little bit of a garnish, a little bit of a sprinkle, a little bit of flair. Basically what a dehydrated does is it takes the moisture out of things with a small amount of heat and some fans. Give it a shake to get it nice. But the pecorino, you need to make the cream with that. You don't really want to dehydrate the pecorino. That's, it's been uh, aged, the pecorino, or the parmigiano, whatever it is. It, that's, that's an artisan process. So you can't dehydrate it because you're gonna kill all the artisans that worked hard to produce this product. You don't do that. You don't do that. Flat and even. Get my peas onto the mat as well. These are frozen peas. I don't wanna watch these, you know what? Let's move forward, I'm not interested. Dehydration takes a while, so that's why we're doing it first. This is gonna be in there about six hours. Six hours, how much I can do? I don't know if you're supposed to do uh, it like this at all. I have no idea. Pasta. Let's cut these out. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a little fun today and play with the whole idea of carbonara. I'm gonna- What do you mean you wanna have fun? I need to understand that. What do you mean fun? I'm gonna make a carbonara frittata. Okay, that's okay. In Naples, they make spaghetti frittata, which is basically leftover spaghetti mixed with eggs and you turn it into a frittata, okay? So you wanna make a carbonara pie? Yes, it's fun. Why not? But make it right. You're gonna use peas in there, cream. Sorry, it's not right. And why is the extra virgin olive oil on the side? You don't use extra virgin olive oil. Basically, a frittata is a baked omelet. It's gonna be like carbonara, but in a pie cut slice. That's okay, chef, that's okay. But make me a carbonara slice. One thing you wanna make sure when you cook dry pasta, you want the water to be salty, not so salty that it's not edible. That's a lot, that's a lot of sea salt. And I want it to be at a full rolling boil. If it's not boiling, it's gonna clump together and stick together. Everybody into the pool. Rigatoni is one of my favorite cuts. Yeah, me too, Peter. I love rigatoni so much. So good. I like that the sauce kind of gets stuck inside of it too. Yeah, yeah, that's probably the best part. Until it comes back to a boil, you gotta keep it stirring to keep it separate and so it doesn't stick to the bottom. Okay, may I look? Ooh, that's a guitar machine. That's the guitar machine from Abruzzo. I can't believe they have it. Is this machine becoming famous in the USA? It is so good, I love it. Well, I thought I was gonna have a cranker. Oh, I just press it down. A la guitar. Yeah, the guitar, yeah. The guitar is a contraption that has guitar string. Please go and watch my nonna's video to make. I'm not gonna watch this. Go and see how my nonna makes it. 
Uh, I'll go down on my, on my channel, how to make fresh pasta with Nonna, and she can show you how to use this guitar. She's got the one from my grandmother. It's so cool. How do you test pasta? You take a piece of pasta, and you test it, right? This still has a little bit of a white ring in it. Yeah, you can tell the white in there, yeah. It probably needs about two more minutes. It's a little before al dente, but I'm okay with that because the pasta's gonna sit for a minute and it's gonna continue to cook. Let's strain it out. Mm, right, because you're making the pie. Give it a quick rinse. To no, you don't rinse the pasta. You're a pro chef. Never rinse the pasta. Unless you make a pasta salad, I guess, or something you need to quickly because you... Having a pasta salad, you need it right now. It needs to cool down right now. You're ready to go to have a picnic. I need a pasta salad. Let me do it. It's an emergency. But you have time. Don't do that. Just to kind of slow down the cooking. Doesn't make sense if you just did. All the Italians out there, don't get upset with me. I am. I am. Normally you don't want to put oil on pasta because the sauce won't stick. But I'm not saucing this pasta. I'm making it into a frittata. So I'm not worried about the oil. The oil's getting a flavor and it's going to stop my pasta from sticking together and getting to be clumpy. I don't understand why you don't cook the pasta at the end. Have your ingredients first, ah, uh, pro chef. And then you cook the pasta. The pasta should be the last thing you cook when you make pasta. And then you mix it with ingredients and then you can make the frittata. So the pasta is nice and warm. Why do you have to kill the pasta and leave it there on the sides? You haven't done the sauce yet. And we're just gonna give it a quick toss so it doesn't stick together. Who makes these pro chefs go online and do this video? This method that I'm doing is totally different than you would for normal carbonara, right? This but you're basically making a frittata with carbonara. So it's the same ingredients as carbonara with extra eggs so you can turn it into frittata. This is Frank going off on a tangent. It's gonna be okay. It looks like got some pork jowl. Guanciale is actually the jowls of the pig that are- It's a pork chick, this one. That's the one. Guanciale is salty, fatty, and it's traditionally what we use in carbonara. Traditionally what we use in carbonara, yeah. See all that pepper? Some people like to take it off. Sometimes I keep it, but it depends how much there is on it, you know? It looks like there's a lot of pepper. Maybe it's good to take it off, but you don't always have to take it off. It has a lot of salt, spices on it that you're supposed to take off, I believe. I like to cut my guanciale into lardon, which is a French term for kind of thick matchsticks. I don't want it just to be a flavor I want it to be a nice component of the dish that gives you some like nice heartiness. When I was in Rome, I did have the guanciale cut that way. This is more like what I do, but they actually cut chunks. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I do like when it's more delicate because the guanciale has strong flavor. So I don't really want to have a big chunk of carbonara. I liked it. I liked it. But I like carbonara. I eat carbonara all the time. And I do want that guanciale to be more gentle, to be honest. That's my, just my taste. Start with just a little bit of olive oil. My you don't need olive oil because you have the fat from the guanciale that is going to turn into oil. I'm gonna throw those pieces of guanciale in there. And let me give you a piece of advice, okay? When you make carbonara, stainless steel is the right pan, or the no-stick pan, even better, okay? But this is gonna be harder for you to do it. You can do it, yes, but it's gonna be harder. Wow, it smells so good already. Power of guanciale. See, bacon will never give you those, those flavors. Hey, Lorenzo, you agree? Render them out until they're just slightly brown on the outside and we've got a lot of fat in the pan. He's gonna save the guanciale that's cooked and he's saving the fat because the fat's going in there too. But yeah, but look how much oil you have now. Come on, man. A lot of oil. I, I do like to use oil too if the guanciale is not good, but this one looks like a really good guanciale. Lorenzo gave me bacon. Carbonara needs to have some sort of pig product. Bacon works for me. For you? Lucky you. A little olive oil just to start my bacon out. This is just a personal preference of mine. I'm just gonna cut my bacon into nice strips. A little thicker because I want to see the bacon in my dish. Right into my pan. I'm gonna use everything. I'm using the bacon. See, that's a lot of oil, plus the oil from the bacon. It's cooking this um, on a high heat, I have to say. It's not really gentle. I like to cook my bacon or guanciale on a low heat. I think the bacon's good. It's sitting in its fat, and I'm gonna leave it in its fat, so it's gonna carry over cook a little. Move it to a cooler spot on my stove, and just let it sit in the pan until we're ready to make this frittata. Okay, so I'm gonna start prepping my sauce, and I have these lovely chunks of cheese. Parmesan Reggiano. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say it again? Parmesan Reggiano. Bravo Lorenzo, you tried very hard. And this is the pecorino. Pecorino, yes, beautiful. You're not gonna use all of it. So honestly, this, this video, video is crap. $174. You can make so many carbonara with that Parmigiano and Pecorino Romano. You just need a little bit of it. I'm just gonna 
take it chunk off here. I'll probably need more. You know, again, why is the wine in that list? For now, let's uh, do that. Wow. Oh, that smell. Oh! That's about $50 on the floor. <laughs> I'll get more in a second. Okay, this is the 24 month aged Parmesan. That is delicious. Of course it is. And you know, you can tell, you can tell, it's beautiful. Lorenzo sent me cream for this. Cream is not something that normally goes into carbonara. Not normally, it does not go in carbonara. No cream in carbonara. That's the first rule. No cream in carbonara. Please do not use it. That creaminess comes from the technique, not from actually using milk product or cream in your dish. So what I decided to do is make a custard. That'll be the base of our frittata. Custard, that's a base of frittata. Peter, I'm, I'm lost now. Oh, Frank, I'll be calling you Peter. Your name is Frank. I'm sorry, Frank Proto. <laughs> <laughs> I keep calling you Peter. <laughs> okay, Frank. I'm sorry. I don't. What are you doing with the cream? I'm probably not going to use all this cream. I don't want it to stop my custard from setting. You don't need to use cream in frittata. You just need to beat the eggs. You can add a little bit of cream if you want, or just add the milk. I find the milk more natural. But yes, you can add a little bit of cream and just a splash. Like I add a splash of milk. But honestly, you're putting too much cream, my friend, in, in this, and it's not right. Nice couple of big pinches of salt. Uh, Lorenzo sent me pre-ground black pepper. I tend not to use this in my house. I find when you grind your own pepper, you get more fragrance, you get a little more heat. I agree, Frank, I agree. I'm gonna add a little extra black pepper just to give it a little like, oh, Frank. Oh my God. My, that's a lot, that's a lot of pepper, but it's good. Carbonara needs pepper. There it is, that's our custard. Nice and peppery. Custard, you call that custard? Well, why do you make a custard? I think we're lost here a little bit. Because Lorenzo was so generous with the cream, I'm gonna make a garnish with it. This is going to be a savory black pepper whipped cream. You gotta try it, right? Okay, cut so far, get five, Frank, get five. We gotta throw it out there. You don't have to use the whole thing. I'm going to season it up lightly. I want the sweet cream to kind of come through. Right, you can see my cream is starting. This guy just loves using cream. He probably never made carbonara the right way. He loves, I can tell he loves using cream. Starting to bubble away. I'm gonna shut it off and I'm gonna add a nice, generous helping. What? How much pepper are you using for this? You use the entire packet. You don't have to use the entire product. Lorenzo is not using the entire Parmigiano and Pecorino. He didn't use the entire bottle of extra virgin olive oil. You don't have to use the entire jar, whatever it's called, or pepper. That's too much, my friend. It's crazy. Too much. Have you heard about less is more? I'm just gonna let this steep for about five minutes. We'll extract some of those black pepper flavors and some of the floral notes of the black pepper, as well as a little bit of heat. Uh, I don't follow you anymore. Get this strained out. If there's a few black pepper flecks in there, or if it has a little color in it, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Let's get this in the fridge. It is a big deal, my friend. Come on. It is a big deal. I guess I'm supposed to toast some peppercorns. About, let's do about like a tablespoon. Okay, normally you do this when you make cashew pepe because cashew pepe is all about the cheese and the pepper. In this recipe, we have guanciale, which has got lots of pepper. We have the pecorino, we have the, the eggs. You do not need to toast your pepper. There's no need to, okay? But I believe details count. So it could be an important detail that I always missed. But I don't want you to believe that this process is, must be involved because I don't want you to think, oh my God, I have to do this as well. It should not be done, because if you crack your pepper right on the spot, the flavor is nice. You're gonna toast your peppercorns, because when you toast them, it brings out some of those nice essential oils and makes them a little more fragrant and toasty. Yeah, it makes sense. Frank, he, did the, he said the right thing. He did say the right thing, but it's detailed. So details always make everything better. I always say that, so I can't disagree. Put this in, it smells fantastic, you guys. My pepper infused cream is completely chilled. Uh, just throw it in there. Make sure like if there's any sort of flecks in the bottom, if there's too many flecks, you can just leave them there. A whisk is meant to produce bubbles. You know, no capital frame, what are you doing with this? What are you doing with the peppery cream in a carbonara frittata? I get five. All you need is eggs, pecorino, the bacon. What do you see? Lots of Guys, I have a video on my YouTube channel how to make spaghetti carbonara frittata. Beautiful, it's easy. My different ingredient is the cheese that you put in the middle, uh, which in the layers, which is burrata. But cream, peas, come on, man. The bubbles, right? 
It's almost like an up and over where you're seeing lots of air bubbles. All right, I think we're there. Put my whisk in, form a peak. See how the peak points up? Firm peaks or stiff peaks. I don't care, Frank. Wow, this is old school, isn't it? I'm just gonna add half of this. I'll save a little bit later. I love adding more pepper to my carbonara, but let's go half for now. Bravo, bravo. See, he knows, he knows Lorenzo what to do. He must have watched my videos. He basically do that, Lorenzo. Bravo, a little bit in there, give the flavors, they make love together. And yeah, what I like about Lorenzo, he didn't cook the pasta yet. He's doing the sauce first. Really, the next step is me getting the pasta cooking and putting the stuff together. Our peas and cheese are done. They've been in here for about six hours. Look at them. Look at those little nuggets of happiness. No, they're not happy. I don't want to see peas in my carbonara. I don't want to see these in a, in a carbonara frittata. No. If you call it carbonara frittata, it's still a carbonara turned into frittata. So you don't need to add ingredients that don't belong there. You already have the bacon that don't belong there. You already have the cream that doesn't belong there. Now the peas. You can't call it carbonara omelette anymore. I'm sorry, Frank or Peter, whatever your name is. You cannot do that. You understand? Carbonara name is still there. It's still there. Okay, if you want to change this, you have to call it omelette carbonara style with cream, peas, and bacon. And let's check out the cheese. The cheese is a little drier. It still has a little bit of that uh, fat to it. That's what I'm looking for. I want a little bit of kind of salt crunch to this. Honestly, I don't understand the point why he did that to the cheese. I don't understand, Frank, and I don't want to understand. Now I have my peas. I really just want to kind of beat them up a little and so they're not going to break anyone's teeth. It's so much easier not to use it. Just too much easier to put it back in the freezer. They were frozen. Put it back in the freezer. All right, that looks sufficiently cracked open. Let's go right into this bowl. I don't agree with this. I really don't agree. I know, I know Gordon Ramsay would be very happy with you and proud. Maybe he wants you to work in his kitchen, but no, this is not good. Dehydrated peas and dehydrated cheese are garnish for our carbonara for that. I am presenting you my mise en place. Get your mise en place together. I like Lorenzo pronunciation, mise en place. Mise en place. Make sure you have everything you need. You don't want to stop to have to go get a pair of tongs. What I have here is, first of all, my boiling water, which I will salt with a fancy sea salt. The ocean and the sea. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah, you want the boiling water, a large pot so the pasta can cook well. Time to assemble our carbonara frittata. All right, let's get our custard in the... See that custard, that's ugly, that's ugly. What you should have done there was to beat the eggs. You know, first make the carbonara cream, right? First, so you put the hot pasta in there, you know, with the carbonara cream, which is basically pecorino, eggs, pepper. The pasta makes love and gets the flavors, right? Then what you do on the side, you beat, I don't know, three, four, five eggs, whatever you need. Add it in there together with the guanciale. But the eggs are like liquid, like this. So not the cream, but the eggs without the cream. Mix it, mix it, mix it. And then you can put it in a pan to turn it into frittata. Again, if you go and watch my video, you learn and you understand what I'm talking about. I am going to add pasta. I don't think I'm gonna use it all. Bacon with all the fat. Don't wash this pan, put it aside just like this. Let's give this a stir. And then we're gonna put in a nice helping of cheese. I think I'll start with just two little nests of my fresh guitar, because it's gonna cook really quick, so I'm gonna do it. Yay, Lorenzo, you did a very good job with this spaghetti a guitar. Actually, I can eat them raw too. They're good when they're raw. Quickly, and I'm stirring right away as I burn my left hand. Oh, sorry, Lorenzo. Put this dish together. The eggs, the cheese, the pasta, pasta water, the fat is all going to emulsify into this glorious creamy sauce. I'm going to put the pasta right in. It only took a couple minutes, guys. It's okay if I use a, have a little bit of a water. Yeah, it's beautiful to do it in the pan because the pasta is so hot. Combined with the eggs, it cooks the eggs. The pasta water needs that too, you know, to warm up the eggs. I saved my pan that has all that nice bacon fat in it and try and even everything out. I want the pasta to be evenly dispersed so that when I cut into it, there's not just a super eggy part with no- So basically cook the whole pasta, but I didn't use it. So if you wasted pasta, why you didn't waste the cream as well or the peas? Next time use a bigger fry pan so you can make a bigger frittata. Otherwise, don't waste the pasta. Second, it looks good, yes. 
yes, it looks good. What you need to do is you probably need more eggs to cover the entire pasta so you can turn it into frittata because now I don't want the top pasta to be like that. The, the pasta needs to be covered so you can make the frittata. You know what I mean? It needs to be a frittata. My pan was nice and hot. It's bubbling away. I'm going to get a nice crispy brown bottom. Let's get in the oven. Let us throw our guanciale in and our rendered oil. Lovely, lovely. I'm just gonna hold it and let it drip. I'm using all of it. In case lovely. Since our sauce is a little too thick, we wanna take a little of that seasoned pasta water and put it in just to make our sauce creamy. Ooh, it's getting creamy. It doesn't get better as it sits, so make sure your guests are ready to eat. Beautiful, what you need to do is to toss. Use your hands and toss the ball. I have a video, um, it's called How to Make Spaghetti La Carbonara in 2021, and that's when I use the bowl to do it. It's very good. I call pasta. Bellissima, look how beautiful it is. So dark yellow, beautiful. Really nice, Lorenzo, bravo. And well done, Frank, for giving the recipe. Bravo, bravo, both of you. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. You can see that it's nice and bubbly and brown and crunchy on top. We want to let this set for about 10 minutes before we cut into it so it's not a sloppy mess. I'm going to stand here intently staring at the pasta frittata until it's time. It's funny, Frank. It looks nice, Frank. It looks nice. I just said that there's cream in there. It is that time to play, guys. Oh my gosh. Ay caramba. Sorry. Sorry. Eeks. I'm going to do the old surgeon style cut. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Look at that. Look, oh my gosh, I'm so happy about this. The back is nice and crunchy. The pasta and the egg is holding everything together. The cream and the egg. All right, see, basically, see what I'm talking about? See that cream in the middle there? It's too much cream. You should have used eggs. Make the egg mix, like I said to you, so the carbonara egg mix goes in the pasta and mix it all with the pasta because that's why we use rigatoni, right? And then use the eggs. And what I like to do, what I said before, is to make a layer of cheese inside because you want this to be moist, okay? So basically, you put the, a layer of pasta then you put cheese in the middle, which could be pecorino. I use burrata and pecorino. Instead of having this cream, because that's, that's what you're eating now, you're eating cream. You could have had a layer of cheese in the middle and inside each rigatoni, you would have the pecorino, carbonara, pecorino, eggs mix. Instead, you cheated, and that's what I don't like. Everything got into the rigatoni. I'm gonna say this is a winner before I even finish it. I'll clean it up in a minute. Pepper. I like adding pepper. And then, oh my gosh, why not? More cheese. I'm gonna take that black pepper cream, and we're gonna make a quenelle. I was taught the two spoon method, shake them off, get your cream, and just kind of go and make your football shape. Just a little dollop right there. Makefa. What do we need that cream for? Why, 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 why do we teach this to people? It looks like ice cream. Why do we need ice cream in this beautiful dish that you created? It's a beautiful dish you created. It's a classic pasta frittata, you know, with the cream, bloody hell. This is cream, but at least it looks good the way it is. Don't add ice cream in peace. Last but not least, let's make this ultra fancy. No. Who told you to put extra virgin olive oil in there? Come on, Lorenzo. Frank, please, why? And finish with some delicious, beautiful extra virgin olive oil. Take some of our nice crunchy cheese and then some of our nice dried out peas. Why do you always need that green? in the carbonara. What is the green gonna do to you? And there you have it, carbonara frittata. I bet Lorenzo did just fine. It's getting harder and harder to stump in lately. So this is my take on Chef Frank's pasta carbonara. From the beautiful ingredients that were used, I don't think I could mess this up. Yeah, I'm curious what he did. It looks very good. Lorenzo, you did a very good job. And that's Frank Razor, so bravo, Frank. And then Frank used all these ingredients for no reason. Like he's got so much cream over there that he doesn't know what to do with it because he only used a spoon. So the cream was not good. You don't need the cream. You didn't need the paste. All you needed was a mozzarella cheese or burrata in the middle and a normal pecorino. You waste time dehydrating the pecorino, making this so fancy. You don't need that fancy stuff. So, and the pasta, why do you kill the pasta? Cook the pasta when you're ready. Have a nice and hot, mixing with all the ingredients. Just a few things that I didn't like about it, but um, the result is great. The way both dishes turned out is great. Um, I like that Lorenzo made fresh pasta. And since going to Rome and eating carbonara made with fresh pasta, I completely changed my mind. And now I love freshly made egg pasta with carbonara. I was always against it. Now I just love it. Yes, it's a bomb. Yes, it's heavy. But I love 
not so much. Right. Hey, buddy. <laughs> the guys, the best part, eating. Sorry. It's been so long. Wow. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> I know, Lorenzo, I know. That's, look how much oil you put in there, Lorenzo, in the carbonara on the left. It looks so nice, but there is way too much oil. Uh, I don't know why Frank told you to do that. And Frank made a carbonara frittata, which is beautiful. It probably, maybe he copied my video, Frank. I think I'm the only one who made, in English, a uh, spaghetti carbonara frittata online. So let me know if you did that. And then you add the bloody peas, the cream, the cream in the pasta. I can accept the bacon in there, but... Not the cream. Wow, you are too <laughs> fancy, man. What did you do? Uh, frittata carbonara. What do you guys think of these dishes? Let me know. I, I like to be creative. I like to, you know, I did a series where I make carbonara in different ways, different shapes. But I always respect the rules and the flavors of carbonara. This cream and peas on the side and the cream inside the pasta. I'm sorry, but it just doesn't can be called carbonara. So well done, well done to Lorenzo using Frank recipe, so the credit goes to both of them. I think Frank wanted to impress us and do so much. He didn't impress me, maybe impressed you. Let me know in a comment below what you think. But thank you so much for watching this episode. I will see you in the next carbonara video. Please go and watch my carbonara series in Rome where I search for the best carbonara. I show you how to make carbonara in 2023, come on. And um, let's keep sharing love for carbonara. Thank you so much. Ciao.